Um, so hello everybody and welcome to my podcast. I'm Ananya and the theme of my podcast is how do you really statistic? As a guest today, we have Christopher Reed. He paints portraits, figures, still life and anything and everything you name. He also enjoys the act of creation and hopes to help people to learn to appreciate all the beauty that is around them present. And welcome Christopher. It's lovely having you on. Anything you Pleasure have to be on. Great. So I have a couple of questions for you and it will be an honor to have you answer them. So let's begin. Um, so the first question I had was how and when did you really know that art was a calling that you wanted to have a career in art? So when I was a, a little kid, probably about seven years old, um, I had a teacher and another student tell me I could never be an artist because I wasn't born with talent. So I took that as a challenge. So I started learning to draw by myself, um, studying art history books, just doing drawings from magazines and then drawing other students in class when they weren't looking and drawing the teacher. And then when they had a school art contest, I won. So I, I felt like I'd kind of proved my point that I could learn to do anything. Um, because some, some people have this notion that you're either born able to draw or not. And it's, it's just not true. If you want to learn to do something and you work hard at it, you can learn it. And art is no different than reading or writing. Um, you know, you can, you can learn it with practice. So I found that even after I'd kind of proven my point, I enjoyed doing it. Because as you get better at something, you, you tend to enjoy it more. Certainly. So I would sit in class and just draw and sketch all the time. And I, then I started sketching comic book characters and so in high school, I wanted to work for Marvel. And then uh, early college, I wanted to work for Pixar. And so I, I did that, uh, you know, the college, computer animation, all of that, was prepared to go work for Pixar and then changed my mind and did something for graphic design that made more money. I ran an advertising firm. And then I realized years later that it wasn't the money that I cared about but that the only part that I really liked was when I got to sketch ideas for clients. So it was the drawing. So I decided that I was willing to give up the, the greater income for something that would make me happier. And so now it's been, I don't know, 20 some years. Uh, I've been painting professionally and I don't regret it at all. I love it. That's great. And best of the part is you took it as a challenge and not something you knew you were good at and pursued that. That's great. So what would you say your definition of the importance of art to society is? How important is art really to society? So art, art has a lot of importance in society in different ways. So art throughout history has been used to affect culture. It's been used to affect politics. Um, I'm not really a political painter, um, but art can be used to help people appreciate the environment, endangered species, uh, socioeconomic problems, um, to understand different cultures better. And it's a language that you can use no matter where you are. So if you see a painting done by somebody like, I'm in South Africa and you're in India, if you see a painting in Africa, you can communicate with that person, you can understand what that painting is saying without any language, without any religion, without any culture. And so it, it bridges a lot of gaps and it can bring people together. Um, but the other thing is, you know, in, in very primitive society, all of your efforts are spent just surviving, you know, just making enough food and staying safe. A society really develops when you get past that. And what you do with your free time at that point really says something about your society. You know, are you gonna spend that free time uh, developing weapons of war to go against other countries? Or are you gonna spend that, that time creating something that adds beauty to the world? And I think throughout history, even if we look at the most primitive tribes in like Papua New Guinea, um, you'll see that as they become a little more advanced, they have time to do something and they they start to put more effort into anything that they do as far as aesthetics to make it look better, whether it's carving a drum or, uh, you know, just decorating things. And so art has been not only a form of expression, 
throughout history, but it's also a way of, of just making our world a little more beautiful, adding something to it. That's also a beautiful saying. You've just like, I mean, yes. So, I mean, for me personally, also, I believe art actually started as a something I used to do in my free time and my leisure time. I was bored. I picked up a paintbrush and I started painting. And it gave me happiness. It almost took me out of the stress and the school pressure or whatever you could call it out of it. It was great. So, and then are you really versatile in your um, mediums of art if you like to work with? Or do you have any particular medium you love to work with? So, if that, that's kind of like asking somebody, um, would you eat just one kind of food for the rest of your life? Yeah. Right? So, um, what's your favorite dish? I don't know. I'm a very indecisive person. I mean, to be very honest. <laughs> okay. So, um, let's say that tikka masala was your favorite dish, right? You yeah. wouldn't want to just eat that every single meal for the rest of your life. That's correct. And there may be people that say, oh, if you eat that, that same thing, if you do the same thing over and over again, it's, it's easier to recognize, oh, you're the person that eats the tikka masala. And you get this from some art galleries where they say, we wish you would paint the same thing in the same medium. But as an artist, it's, it's about having fun. It's about expressing myself. And, you know, sometimes you want to speak quietly. Sometimes you want to speak at a regular voice. And sometimes you want to get loud. And so you, you have different mediums. Um, I work in pastel, acrylic, watercolor. And I also do graphite and charcoal. Um, but I'm so in love with color that I, I haven't done much graphite and charcoal in a long time. But there are things that each medium does well and things that it doesn't do well. So, for instance, I like to work really large in pastel, uh, medium in acrylic, and smaller in watercolor. And, you know, I, I do occasionally do a large watercolor or a small pastel, but I, I tend to look at the subject. And if it's a really dark, broody subject, it tends to work better in acrylic. If it's got lots of soft edges, I'd prefer pastel. Um, and then there's, there's wet into wet effects and glazing effects that I get in watercolor that you can't get in any other medium. So I really kind of look at the subject and decide what it's asking for. And I think too often we try to force the subject into what's easiest for us or what we're most, most familiar with instead of trying to communicate what we see in that subject. So yes, I switch media all the time. And right now I'm working on a watercolor um, I've got a commission to do in acrylic right after this. I've got paintings all over the walls and pastel and acrylic and, wa and watercolor. So I, I don't think that the medium defines you as an artist. I think that, you know, the way that you paint and the subjects that you choose and how you communicate with your art is what defines you. So one other thing I would add is that something I've found both teaching and in my own painting is that. I learn faster when I switch subjects. I mean, switch media. So what I mean by that is if I worked in watercolor and I did 30 paintings in a month, then I would improve gradually. You know, each painting, you get better and better and better. But what I have found is at the beginning of that month, if I do a watercolor and then I do a bunch of acrylic and charcoal and pastel for the rest of the month, when I come back to the watercolor, I've improved a little bit more than I would have if I just did watercolor for that month. So the skills that you're building in other media affect all media. So you'll learn lessons. If I, if I do charcoal, I'm really reinforcing my handling of value. And that pays off in watercolor and acrylic. If I'm doing pastel, then my handling of edges improves. If I'm doing uh, watercolor, my planning improves because I have to plan for working uh, light to dark and preserving the white of the paper. Um, so it, it just all works together. And it's kind of like having a, a full body workout. You know, it wouldn't be any, if you just went and said, well, this is, this is the finger I use to hold a paintbrush and you just worked out that, that finger, then you're not going to get the same improvement as if you worked out your, your shoulders and your heart and your lungs and everything. So it all works together. So, yes, I work in a lot of media.
that's true but do you however have a comfort medium you love to work with when you just feeling like you have to paint like for yourself for the free pleasure time um i would say that pastel is probably my favorite it's it's freeing that i can work so large and so quickly um and it, it's different for everybody you know there's there's some artists that love oil painting i did oil painting in college i was classically trained and i didn't like it i didn't like the fumes i didn't like the preparation time but i know some people love it uh for me pastel allows me to get my hands dirty and i'm you know i'm completely immersed in the painting so that i'm smudging pastel around with my fingers i'm adding color uh, i can blend edges um i can create new colors with with mixing on the surface um i can get stumbling effects i can i can do so much with pastel so quickly and so i i usually choose that for plain air painting and plain air is oh if if you have not plain air painted you need to it's it is a game changer and it it changes the way you see the world and the way you paint i would try that i mean after listening to this i sh- surely would i personally love acrylics because they dry out quickly however they have a drawback they, you cannot really merge them for a long while because they dry out so quickly and in this case the pastels are what i have to work with <laughs> these don't dry quickly okay this give them a try golden opens are formulated so they stay wet so i recycle and reuse so i use these trays from the from the store you know whenever i get something that comes in a styrofoam tray it can't really be recycled so i use it as a paint palette so at least it gets a second life it gets reused i can put paint in one of these acrylic paint and i can set it down and come back a couple days later pick it up and continue painting and that's acrylic so if you like having the the paint stay wet longer there are paints that you can choose that will allow you to do that and you know there's so many advances in in uh in art materials Absolutely. you know we have new brushes that you know memory point brushes that go back to a shape and mm-hmm. won't lose their edge we have uh yeah, the paints that stay wet we have watercolors with a new type of binder aquazole instead of gum arabic we have primer for watercolor that, so that you can now paint on canvas um you know for for acrylic you have gloss gel mediums you have interference mediums you have uh impasto mediums which allow you to do thick textures so there's there's a lot to explore and a lot to test out and many different uh tools that you can use to communicate through your art so no, if, if you really like acrylic if you really like acrylic and you want it to stay wet longer try one of those um, i agree but also try some some pastel and some watercolor because they'll make you improve in acrylic even faster would give it a try certainly so do you have something in mind that you create or do you have an inspiration like do you take inspiration from somewhere and then just replicate that or you create whatever you have in mind so i think a lot of times people see something and that's when they become inspired um to me when i have a I mean, it's more for illustration like the art becomes something that i'm using to illustrate a thought whereas when i see something like if i'm out plain air painting the light catches a, a tree the certain way or the the side of a rock and instantly it becomes something that makes me want to paint it so it's kind of like the visual comes before the mental and the mental just helps me figure out how to take what it is that i like about what i'm seeing and communicate that to the viewer because really that's that's what art is to me it's i see something and i want to share it with somebody else so um i do generally when i get ready to paint something i see something and i think i want to paint that and then i start to think about why do i want to paint it and this is a step that i think a lot of artists miss out on they're more worried about uh how many likes they're going to get on it on social media or or something like that or is this going to sell 
Instead, it should be, why should I paint this? You know, is there something about it that makes me want to paint it? Not just, oh, it's kind of pretty. Well, it, it needs to be something like, uh, you know, this mountain, is, I want to show the size, the immensity of it, how it makes the landscape around it seem so small, or, or this animal, how it blends into its environment, or how it stands out from its environment. And when you, when you know that, that helps you understand how to make that work, how to communicate that. So if I was trying to, say, show the immensity of, of, of a mountain on a landscape, then I wouldn't make the sky really large and have a lot of huge clouds because that would take away from that. Mm -hmm. I also wouldn't overly detail flowers in the foreground. So people ask, when do you stop a painting? Well, that's kind of determined if you know why you're painting it. And there are times where uh, my wife's a photographer and she will have a photograph and ask if I want to paint it. And I will look at it and I'll think it's such a great photograph. It wouldn't add anything for me to paint. It. There's no reason for me to paint it. So a lot of times I end up working with photos that I take on my old cell phone <laughs> or paint from life whenever possible. So do you have like kit prepared to carry along with you? Or do you just do like what? any kit prepared for you to carry with you whenever you're traveling or something of that sort? I do. Um, so I keep plastic bins like this around. And I will have, uh, I've got one for pastel. I've got an easel that I designed myself. Um, so it goes in a small bag over my shoulder. I have a book bag with the tray for the easel. Um, and then into that book bag, if I'm taking watercolor, I'll throw a bottle of water, this, which is my paints, brush kit, with brushes in it and a block of watercolor paper or like this is watercolor on a panel. Um, and I just throw that in the book bag. If I'm taking acrylic, then I just throw a couple panels that I've primed in the bag and then a, uh, be able to see them. I just close up that, that box and it fits in my book bag. So I have, I have three boxes. One for pastel, one for watercolor, one for acrylic. And so all I have to do is grab that and I'm ready to go. That's great. So have you have an experience where you looked at something and thought, oh, this would have looked better in watercolors while you had an acrylic box with you? All the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it's, I, I, I think so. that as, as artists, we're always going to uh, be very critical of our own work. And I find that as soon as I start a painting, I have to be careful because I want to, I get excited about the next painting already. So I have to stay focused on what I'm working on, but there's always that critique at the end where you look at it and you really should see things that you could improve every single time. It's not something to be upset about and think, oh, I didn't get it right. No, it's something to be excited about. There's always room to improve. There's another adventure waiting. So yes, I finish a painting and I think, ah, oh, I should have brought acrylic today, but I brought watercolor. And the thing is, I improve and I, I get better and better at all media. And I grow as an artist by challenging myself. So it's not about picking the, the medium that's going to be easiest. So a lot of times, if I'm going out plain air painting, yes, I, I take either one medium or the other. I don't take all three. So I'm kind of trapped into, like, if I take pastel. And I get somewhere and it's a rainy day, then I'm kind of limited. I have to get under shelter because I can't let the pastel get wet. Whereas with acrylic, I, I can let some water get on it. It won't really hurt it. Yeah, absolutely. But, but it, it just varies. At the end of a painting, you're not the same artist as you were when you started the painting. So you'll see things that you would have done different. And that's, that's perfectly normal. There's no problem with that. That's great. Have you, however, like gone back home and painted the same thing in another medium? So, all right. I kind of feel like, you know, if you take a, if you take an orange and you juice it and you squeeze all the juice out of it, and then you drink that, 
going back and doing the same thing again, to me, kind of feels like trying to squeeze more juice out of that, that orange. You've already got the best part out of it. Mm -hmm. um, the most exciting part of a painting for me is when those early stages, when I get to sketch it in and where I can see already where it's going to go. You know, there's with experience, you get to where you've put down a few strokes and you think, ah, this one's going to work. You know, and or I think I'm, I'm a bit excited to see where this one goes. And that initial excitement where you take a piece of blank canvas or paper or panel and you start to turn it into a work of art. That's the most exciting part. So redoing it to me, if if I was going to repaint a subject, I'd do it totally differently. You know, that's that's my chance to say, okay, well, I did it landscape format before. What if I do it in a vertical scroll format now? What if I totally change the time of day? You know, that's the kind of thing that I would do on a second painting. I, I don't really have much interest in repainting in a, in a, just to do it in a different medium. Um, with the exception that maybe I might have done a little small painting and I decide I want to go back and really see what I can do with this large and, and go do that large in the studio. Got it. So last question I had for you was, how do you feel where you currently are today? And how did you really get there? And how do you feel of yourself? Um, I think every artist wants to get better and better and do more and more. Um, I have a newborn baby, so I'm not getting as much time to paint as I would like. Um, but, you know, it's worth it because I've got a beautiful little boy. So I can't complain about that. But where I am is uh, on my path and everybody is, is on their own artistic path. I'm just grateful that I get to do this, first of all, for a living. I'm very grateful. I've got some, some great supporters and people that collect my artwork. And I couldn't do it without them. I couldn't do it without the support of my wife. Um, because, you know, there's, there's times as an artist where you don't know when you're going to make another sale. Uh, you have COVID hit and you're not having exhibitions and you're not teaching workshops. You're not getting to travel. Um, so, you know, there's always uncertainty. But, you know, there are people that have it so bad. There are people that are outside. They don't know where their next meal is going to come from. So I am so grateful and I'm in a position to be able to paint. Um, and again, we're, we're not one of those societies where we have to struggle, you know, to survive every day. We have time to paint. And we have resources like the internet where I can communicate with other artists and with fans. And it's, it's amazing. It's a, it's a great time to be an artist. And there's more artists today than ever in history. So I'm, I'm just very grateful. Um, but I hope to do more and get back to some much larger paintings soon and uh, just keep painting, do more plein air and travel again. That's great. So firstly, congratulations on the news of the baby boy. That's great. And it was lovely having you on. And I loved your answers and the spirit you came on with. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I'm honored to have you on. It's a pleasure. Do you, you have any other questions? Uh, if anybody has any questions, they can uh, email me or message me. I'm, I'm happy to talk art. Um, I don't want to talk about getting a loan from Burkina Faso or, <laughs> or Ray-Ban sunglasses, but I'm, I'm happy to talk art. And uh, I, I wish you the best of luck with, with, your, with your art. Thank you so much again.